Joining us now, uh, so happy to have Carl Raymond, who is the host of the Gilded Gentleman History Podcast in New York City, uh, looking at this very amazing time in in U.S. history, especially in the development of New York City and other places. Carl, it is awesome to have you with us today. Welcome. I am so happy to be here. Can you hear me all right from we the can. west we, side of New York? We got you from the west side oh, of I'm New so York. Happy. You know, it's so interesting hearing you talk about your conversation about, you know, the red control of New York. But yes, <laughs> here I am in New York, and I'm so honored to join you. Hello, Singapore. Well, that's just great, Carl. We've got so much to talk about. But from a, you know, a New York perspective, very briefly, give us your thoughts on rent control in New York. I mean, does it work? Is it a success? Singaporeans would love to know that. Well, I'm very lucky because I've been living in New York for just about 30 years now. And mm. I, I actually have what's called a rent stabilized apartment, um, mm. which is which is wonderful because that allows me you, you know, to stay here and it controls it controls the rent. So, um, yes, I am all in favor of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Carl, let's move on to The Gilded Gentleman. Now, some folks may be familiar with the program The Gilded Age, which was on HBO uh, last year, and also um, other, other shows uh, that came out like Bridgerton and others kind of looking at that era. Uh, tell us a little bit, give us the overview of your podcast, The Gilded Gentleman, and what that, what do you cover in it? Absolutely. So the Gilded Gentleman History podcast essentially covers the historical period from roughly 1870 post-Civil War up until the beginning of World War I in 1914. I look at three separate cultures. I spend a lot of time looking at America's Gilded, Gilded Age, but I also look at France's Belle Epoque and also late Victorian and Edwardian England as well. They were all very opulent societies, but they came and they came about and they grew in very, very different ways. But as you mentioned, with the launch of the HBO series last year, The Gilded Age, and we'll be seeing season two a little bit later this year, there's been a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of interest in The Gilded Age, which was the period in America following the Civil War. So it really did indeed begin about 1870 and continue on into the century. And it was a period of very rapid industrialization. The economics in America changed right. from the yeah. old merchant culture to this, the, really the building of modern America with, with railroads and electricity and gas and all of these things. And investing, that was how money was made. You invested in these businesses and made a tremendous amount of money, which resulted mm. in incredible disposable, untaxable income, which of <laughs> course, uh, you know, resulted in the great homes and the just the incredible displays of money. I mean, it is extraordinary. The Gilded Age, the TV series, and the period continues to resonate and fascinate people all around the world. You've alluded to it right there. What is it that you think we find so... Is it the excess? Is it the decadence? Is it the fashions, the cuisines? I mean, what is it, in well, your opinion, Carl, it, that just it's, makes it so appealing? Yeah, it's it's all of that, you know, and that's really what I try to do on the show is I like to certainly tap into the public's fascination with what is considered mm. the beauty, the opulence, the elegance, of course, the extravagance. But there was a very dark side to that, too. This was a period in history that had tremendous poverty. It had tremendous wealth inequality at the time. You know, people look at, at film recreations of this period and think, oh, the balls were so beautiful. Well, it was actually <laughs> incredibly uncomfortable to wear a yes. corset for however many hours to try to <laughs> dance in those heavy costumes in overheated yeah. ballrooms. As you know, I just did it. My latest podcast this week was all about looking at the balls. And yeah. so what I try to do is bring a little bit of reality. I try to tell a little bit of what it was really like, sort of the other side of the coin to make it a little bit more real. You're, you spend so much time uh, on these. And, and by the way, I think you're available on pretty much all the streaming services, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. Everywhere you find, you can yeah, find Apple, the podcast, Spotify. The Gilded Gentleman is available. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I listen to you on Stitcher uh, every week, but yeah. uh, every, or sorry, every two weeks when, when your uh, episodes come out. But the production quality and the, and the 
research that you do is what really struck me. I, I, I'm a gushing fan. I have to uh, admit, I've been, I've been listening you, since the very first one. No, no. but seriously, it's it, Neil knows, right? He's been talking about it all week. <laughs> we have many wonderful guests, but he's been particularly oh, excited about this I'm one. So, I, I, I'm so happy. I'm trying to, I, yeah. I don't have, I don't have too many podcast crushes. Okay, Carl, oh, but that's fine. I've got a crush oh, on the fine. Gilded Gentleman. Uh, but anyway, um, you talk about a lot of things. You talk about circumstances, for example, the development of lower Manhattan into Midtown and upper Manhattan. Right. You've talked about, um, uh, you know, the building uh, of uh, Central Park of certain people like the Astors and the Vanderbilts and the big names that many of us mm -hmm. might know. Um, mm -hmm. You've talked about country homes. You've, I mean, you, there isn't really a topic that that around this um that you haven't really discussed much what are some of the favorite ones that you have that you have done where maybe you learned something or you just thought it was a fun topic to talk about oh well you always learn things right no matter what subject you research but i will say that one of the really perennially interesting topics that that my listeners tell me it's always food everything comes back mm. to food right mm. and i did a show last year called golden plates and dinners on horseback which was one of yeah. my most popular shows and it was looking at a number of things. It was looking at the restaurant culture of the time because that was something that that really took off in the middle of the 19th century. We really didn't always have restaurants. And then, of right. course, you had the great the great show palaces of Delmonico's and Sherry's. And, and Mrs. Astor, in fact, did have a set of golden plates that she entertained on. And one of the most famous over-the-top dinners it took place at Sherry's restaurant where a gentleman that had tremendous money to burn decided that he would entertain his friends with horse by having a dinner on horseback. And they brought the horses up the freight elevator and they decorated the ballroom like a country paddock. <laughs> and, and now I'm really not making this up, gentlemen, you know, and, and they served dinner astride horseback with lots of champagne and silver trays and waiters dressed like jockeys and, <laughs> you know, it cost it caught in today's money that that dinner cost well over uh, over a million, oh, well over a million dollars just for one night. And that oh, was God. one of the less expensive things. So the <laughs> extravagance of the food yeah. is something that that people find very fascinating. Hmm. And and Carl, we love this stuff, don't we? I mean, we mentioned just now the TV series, which was written by Julian Fellows, who right. I believe wrote Downton Abbey. That's and right. people love Downton Abbey, the, the wealth, the excess, the hmm. decadence, hmm. The, as you mentioned there, and also the gilded age. I mean, you're an expert in this field. How accurate is the TV series, The Gilded Age, which was very popular in Singapore on HBO? Right. How accurate well, do you think that setting is? It, it, it's very accurate. I mean, Julian Fellows is is a master storyteller, and he spends a great deal of time researching details of costume, of dress, of hair, of of all of those details. Which you you know, it may be something that's on the screen for a fleeting moment, but it's still it's accurate. It's still it's authentic. One of the great films uh, from 1993 was Martin Scorsese's adaptation of Edith mm. Wharton's The Age of Innocence. And that is an extraordinary film from the point of view of its accuracy. The dishes that you see on the tables are actual recipes and dishes from that period. I yeah. actually recently met a woman who was an extra in that film, and she was in the back row of wherever it was, probably on camera for a half a second, but her, her hair and her costume were all meticulous. Yeah. And so... Yeah. When it's very important, I think. Uh, yeah. Let me just follow up on that because I know you do quite a bit on the authors of of uh, New York. Edith Wharton is well known in mm. Singapore. She's taught in the on the syllabus at the uh, at local school system here. Of course, she was the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction for the That's Age right. of Innocence. That's, That's extraordinary right. in itself. You do a lot of about her. You do walking tours about her. That's what right. is it about her writing and that writing of the period? that yeah. still resonates today. And if I can just add, you know, you've done several podcasts with her featured in them. That's right. And they are all brilliant. I mean, just, okay. just oh, thank you so, so much. No, but I mean, I, just really, really informative and bring in the side of her, her personal side, as well as her professional side. Right. Carry on, Carl. Yeah. I'm deeply passionate about the life and work of, of Edith Wharton. I've been studying Wharton and lecturing and writing about Wharton for about 10 years now. 
Um, and of course, there's always something to discover. What's important about her is that she lived in the Gilded Age. She wrote about the Gilded Age. She was a creative, artistic woman. And but uh, but but the irony, of course, is that she couldn't live in that culture. That was not a culture that certainly supported a female writer. And so, as you know from my podcast, in fact, a recent one when I talked about her life in France, the last third of her life was actually spent in France. It wasn't even spent in America at all. And she wrote The Age of Innocence and some of her most important New York fiction when she was, in fact, living in Europe and living in France because she was looking back and she was trying to find some sense of moral mm. order after mm. the First World War. So you could say that she was a, a first person witness to this culture. And mm. that's what's so important about her. You know, people have said before that if you want an etiquette manual to the Gilded Age, all you need to do is read a novel by Edith Wharton. And, and it's mm. true. Um, Interesting. Yeah. One of our one of our listeners, Rob uh, Salisbury, joining us from Australia today, uh, wants to know what your spin on the rapid growth of the Wrigley family and their massive mansions in Chicago, Arizona, California, etc. And I'll just add to that: you did a fascinating uh, podcast on Bertha Palmer yeah. of the Palmer House in Chicago as well. So you you've talked about some of the Chicago families, Wrigley being one of them. Um, you do occasionally branch off and and uh, go out of New York to talk about some of these. What's your take on some of these other huge families uh, from that era well i will say i i really can't speak to the wrigley family because i have not worked on the, on that history and i don't know them intimately i will say however that it's something that's very important to me about the gilded gentleman is i don't want to just spend my time in new york because mm -hmm. the gilded age in america took place of course throughout all america but it but it grew in different ways in different cities that's why i was so passionate about doing the bertha palmer story because she's often been called the, the Chicago Mrs. Astor, and I think that's a misnomer. On the surface, they can be construed as very similar, but they are actually, as my guest shared, deeply different women. Bertha Palmer was much more of a businesswoman. She actually rolled up her sleeves when she had to. Caroline Astor didn't. She wasn't just a socialite. Yeah. That's right. Didn't do that kind of mm -hmm. thing. I'm also very much interested in looking at San Francisco because San Francisco had a Gilded Age as well. But let's remember so much of the wealth on the West and in San Francisco began to be fueled by the gold rush much earlier in the 19th century. But there wasn't this whole three generations, four generations of, of old family the way we had in New mm. York and on the East Coast. So the, the money was very different there. And, and certainly the society was built very differently. So I, I will take my notes and I will look at the Wrigley family and I will look at certainly <laughs> some others. Um, but that's very much a mission of the show is to look at these dynasties, really, these yeah. American dynasties and how they developed and how they grew in different ways, despite the fact they were all very wealthy. Carl, what I love about what you do I, I've watched some of your videos in the podcast is you're so wonderfully passionate mm. about New York itself <laughs> mm, as mm. I am. I've seen you stand yeah. outside Edith Wharton's house <laughs> and talk passionately about the history and the heritage and the, the legacy of her literature and so on. It's just yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And I try to go to New York every year, every other year. I, I intend to go again this year in June, July. I will meet you at some point. Let when, when me I go. give you a tour, Neil. Oh, it's it's <laughs> happening. It's happening, Carl. But the point yep. is, is, is just that people who haven't been to New York often say to me, what is it about New York, Neil? You keep going back. Yeah. What is it? Mm. Carl, for the benefit of Singaporeans, you'll do a much better job than I. Many of whom have gone to New York, of course, to be fair. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Not my friends. But First no, of all, <laughs> what is it about New York? Well, and, and I think it's also true of, of other cities, major cities in the world. However, what I will say is New York is often called, is often compared to an onion where you keep peeling back the layers. And I've lived in New York for 30 years. I'm actually from New England. I'm not originally from New York. And the thing that makes me so passionate and excited about it is you're always learning something new. The thing about it is New York is old New York is still here. 19th century New York is still here if you just know where to look for it. That's the big thing is people often come to New York, they see Midtown, they see Times Square, they see modern buildings and all of that's fine. But there is another story to the city that actually even goes back to the 17th century. And parts of it are still here. You just have to know where to look for it, you know, and, and that's why I love, you know, I've been a licensed New York City tour guide now for over 10 years. And 
I love sharing that with people on the streets because as you know, and any of you, any of anyone listening today, when you come to New York, you have to walk around. You have yeah. to walk the streets. You can't you can't just sit on the subway or take a bus or whatever yeah. happens straight. Absolutely. And, I'm actually excited and that's about what I love it. about it because I'm always discovering something or yeah. seeing something I didn't know was there. Yeah, we're talking to Carl Raymond, the host of the Gilded Gentleman podcast. Uh, new episodes out every week and get on on all your streaming services. Carl, you you had a relationship with um, the Bowery Boys podcast as well, which is where I first heard you uh, several years ago um, during the pandemic. And I was searching around for something to listen to. And uh, look, I've never lived in New York. I've been there many times. My ancestors went to New York in the 17th century uh, from Holland. Um, so I have a connection that way, but, but listening to the Bowery Boys podcast, the way that you guys would go neighborhood by neighborhood um, in a more modern sense, but also catching the history, that to me really turned me on to this magic that you are just talking about, about New York. Mm. And, and tell, tell me uh, just a bit about the relationship between the Bowery Boys podcast and now the Gilded Gentleman. Oh, sure. Well, Bowery Boys produced my show. Uh, mm -hmm. I started working with the Bowery Boys uh, several years ago. Uh, Pre-pandemic, uh, the Bowery Boys have been around for about 15 years. They started a podcast before really anybody knew what a podcast was. They've been out there for about 15 years, actually over 15 years now, which is extraordinary. And several years ago, they expanded the business and they started a walking tour business called Bowery Boys Walks. And as a licensed tour guide, uh, they hired me as a guide because my approach to history, my approach to New York history was very similar to theirs. And I did a number of tours with them, and I knew that I wanted to begin a podcast on my own, and they were interested in producing a show, and we knew each other, and it was sort of a harmonic convergence. And so they became my producers and launched my show over a year ago. So they are my advisors. They are my producers. I work very, We work very closely together, and I still do tours through Bowery Wonderful. Boys Walks. And, and, and Carl, I have to say now, I'm genuinely excited <laughs> about the prospect of doing one of your tours. I'm not just saying that. If it wasn't true, I, I wouldn't you. say it. <laughs> I, I, my wife and daughter, we are coming. I cannot wait to see you. Now, for the benefit of Singaporeans who do go to New York quite regularly, in fact, yep. you may be aware, we've just opened Singapore's first hawker center, like a food court in yeah. New York. It's called Urban Hawker. I Urban believe. Hawker, yeah. Yeah, it's in New York. So there's a real Singapore connection there. We're starting to travel further afield now that the pandemic is easing. Oh, Many great. Singaporeans will go to New York in the, you know, in the summer months during the school holidays. Tell them about your walking tours and why they should take them. You know, um, what well, you should take, absolutely should take, go to BoweryBoysWalks.com. And there are a number of tours. The business has expanded since I first worked with them. I specialize in certain neighborhoods and in certain um kinds of tours. I, I do Edith Wharton's New York, which is a look at her life. It's a look at her characters. If you know nothing about Edith Wharton, that's perfectly fine because it's a walking tour through what is left of the Gilded Age. So if you're interested in that, please take that. I also do a tour called Inside New York, uh, Inside Old New York. And that's a, a unique tour because it's the know-how neighborhood of New York. So mm. it's really an older neighborhood, a little bit further south. And the centerpiece of that tour is an extraordinary historic house museum called the Merchant's House Museum, which was built in the 1830s and lived in by one family for over 100 years. And it's a extraordinary mm. historic home where so much of the family's original belongings are still there. And I've worked with the house for a long time. And so the reason I call the tour Inside New York, Old New York, is that you see the neighborhood, but you actually get to go inside a property and see the history from a very immediate view nice. of the family. So it's a unique tour. And we've just launched that and it's selling out. So please take either of those. I'm available for private tours so I can customize whatever somebody wants to do. And we have a number of neighborhoods of New York that other guides all under Barry Boy's Walks actually uh, handle too. So we've awesome. got New York pretty well covered, I have to say. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait, Carl. I will see you in July. Carl, thank you so much. We've been talking with Carl Raymond, the uh, host of the Gilded Gentleman podcast and uh, does does uh, tours around New York as well. Great to have you with us. We certainly hope you'll come back on again in the future. I Maybe would love to come episode. back. 
Please right. visit me at gilded, the gildedgentleman.com. Listen to the show, and I can't wait to see you, gentlemen, and anyone else who's listening in New York. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks, Carl. Have a great Take day. Take care. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wide World on Money FM 89.3.